Hey guys, in this video, we are going to see how to create a responsive grid style here in Figma using the material design guide. So first things first, I would have a MacBook Pro layout. I would keep it selected. Then I would come here, I would add a layout grid property and I would change this to columns. Now I am changing this to columns because when we are talking about creating a responsive grid style, we are mainly talking about column grids. So I would keep this selected still. Then I would go over to material.io. Then I would come here and I would click on this search icon at the top right corner there. When I click on it, I'll type in grids here, then press the enter key on my keyboard to have this come out. Now I would come here and I would click on this first search result. When I click on it, I would be taken to this page. So I can scroll down to this table where we are going to have our breakpoints stated and all the values for that breakpoint. So the first breakpoint that we have here is the extra small breakpoint, which is for mobile phones. The second breakpoint is the small breakpoint, which is for tablets. We have the next one here for laptop and we have the other one here for desktops. Now we are going to understand how to use this table to create a column grid style in Figma. The first thing you need to do is this. Come back here and keep your layout selected. My layout currently is this MacBook Pro. So keep it selected. When you keep it selected, then take note of the width value. Currently, mine is 1440. When you take note of that width value, then you'd go over to this table and identify the breakpoint that your layout falls under. So my own layout that has a width value of 1440 falls under the large breakpoint, which is for desktops. Because as you can see here, it says 1,440 plus. So if you have a layout where the value of the width is 1,440 and above, it means that that layout falls under the large category. Now, if I come back here and I have another layout, let's have an iMac layout. And this layout, as you can see, has a width value of 1,280. Now, if I take note of this width value and I come here, to this table, you would see that 1,280 falls under the medium breakpoint because these medium breakpoints are for layouts that has a width value that is between 1,240 to 1,439. And as you can see here, 1,280 falls within this range. So that's how to identify the breakpoints first. Now, when you identify the breakpoint, you'd use all of these values here to set your column grid styles for that layout. So let's come back here. I'll come here. I'll take this out and I'll select the MacBook Pro layout once more. When I select it, I'll come here and I'll click on the layout grid settings property to have this. Now, the first property to set here is the count property and this count property controls the number of the columns that we are going to have on our layout. Now let's go over to material design to see how many number of columns that we are going to have. If I come here, you would see that for this breakpoint, the number of layout columns is set to 12. So I would come here and I'll change these to 12. Now the next property here is the color property. Currently it's set to red at an opacity value of 10%. I'll leave it like that. Now the next property here is the type property. And this property is currently set to a value of stretch. And this stretch value is what you should stick with when creating a column grid. Now, the next property here is the width property. This property is automatically set to auto because I have this set to stretch. If I change this to center, you would see that I'm able now to type in a value in the width property there. But if I come here and I change this to stretch, you'd see that it's automatically set to auto. So leave it like that. Now, the next property here is the margin property. And this margin property creates a margin space on the left side of our layout and the right side of our layout. And it also defines the container space of our layout. So if we go over to material design, you'd see that that container space is called the body. 
So how do we use this margin property to define the margin space and the body space? We are going to see how to do that over here. Now you can see that the body here has a value of 1040, but the margin property here currently has a value of scaling. Now, when the value is set to scaling, it means that that value can actually grow based on how the screen size expands. So what we are going to do now is this, because we can't go in there and type scaling. What we are going to do is we are going to use this margin property of this breakpoint that is directly before this large breakpoint. So our margin property will be 200. I'll come here and I'll type in 200. Now, when I type in 200, you would see that a margin space is created on the left here and a margin space is created on the right. After that space is created, you would also notice that the container space has been defined or the body space, however you call it. Now, the final property here is the gutter property. Currently, it's set to 20. But if we go over to material design, you would see that there is no gutter property stated here. So how do we sort that? Come here and click on this link here. You can see where my mouse pointer is on. Click on this link that says columns, gutters, and margins. When you click on it, you would be taken to this section. Now scroll down to the gutter section and you can see that over here it says on mobile at a breakpoint of 360 dp this layout grid uses 16 dp gutters if we scroll down to this point here you would see that it says on a tablet at a breakpoint of 600 dp this layout uses 24 dp gutters now this will mean that from a tablet screen size upwards always stick to using 24 dp gutters so i would come here and i'll type in 24 just like this and that property is set so with this we have successfully created a responsive column grid style for our layout let's use an ipad pro 12.9 if i have this i would first of all identify the width value here which is currently 1024 if i identify that i would come here and i'll take note of the breakpoint so i would scroll down and you'd see that 1024 falls under this breakpoint here. So the columns will be set to 12. I would add a column grid, set the count to 12, leave the color set to this, leave this set to stretch. And for the margin property, I'd come here. The margin property currently is set to scaling. So this means that I would use this base value here, which is, which is 32. And that is because this here is also a tablet screen size. But this here is a larger tablet screen size, right? Which automatically means that this screen size here is actually a scaling screen size. It's like a bigger tablet screen size. What I'm going to do is I would use 32 here as the base value so that whichever value that falls between this range here will scale with 32 as its base. The margin is going to start from 32 px and scale upwards. As simple as that. So I would come here. And I'll type in 32, have that set. And for the gutter, if I come here and I click on column gutters and margins, if I scroll down to the gutter section, now you'd see that it says on a tablet at a breakpoint of 600 dp, this layout grid uses 24 dp gutters. So I'll come here and I'll type in 24 for a tablet screen. And I'll close this. So we have a column grid now. If I hold it and I increase it, you'd see that it's responsive. If I close it in, it's responsive. I still have 12 columns there. If I come here and I close this in, it's responsive. If I increase it, it's responsive still. So this is how to use the material design grid system to create responsive layout grid styles for our layouts here in Figma. So if you like this video, don't forget to click on the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to share.